Great stories usually start from small and humble beginnings. After spending two years on the drawing board, we have decided to establish a university which will provide us with highly skilled and mobile workforce in science and technology for the future. Since its inception in 2012, the University of Health and Allied Sciences has grown into one of the most reputable institutions in Ghana. Located both in Ho and Hohoe, the university specializes in the training of health professionals. In this episode, we look at the reign of Professor John Osu Chipong. Uh, when we took over in 2016, there were quite a number of important projects that were ongoing, which uh, we needed to mobilize the necessary resources to complete. The first one was the CD Auditorium where Bank of Ghana had made provision for about 4 million CDs. Uh, and uh, work had uh, progressed uh, substantially to about 60% or thereabout. Uh, we needed to raise extra money. So with the support of the chairman of council, we got access to the governor of the Bank of Ghana and uh, through further collaboration, they agreed to provide initially an extra 2 million CDs to make it a total of 6 million CDs. We were able to uh, finish the roofing and uh, begin to do some of the uh, fittings and uh, infrastructure in there. Uh, but it was very clear that uh, we needed more money to be able to completely furnish it. So we had to go back to Bank of Ghana and uh, we were able to raise another 2 million CDs to do the central air conditioning and do the furniture and uh, put it in the shape that it is today. So that is one of the uh, things that we're able to uh, complete. And uh, because the funding came from Bank of Ghana, uh, we decided through the normal university processes to name it the CD Auditorium in recognition of the support of 8 million CDs that we received from Bank of Ghana. Uh, School of Pharmacy, for instance, uh, <clears throat> started in a few offices in Dave. Uh, but uh, we realized that we needed uh, uh, a more permanent uh, facility for them um, because the school was growing and uh, we decided that again we will use our location from GetFund to do this. So we have managed to put up uh, a building which has um, six classrooms and uh, uh, also some laboratories and offices for faculty and the dean and the administrators. Uh, as far as we are concerned, this is just uh, the incubator facility for the School of Pharmacy. Uh, the School of Pharmacy should be much bigger than this, but this is what we could do under the current circumstances. Uh, 
Obviously, this is a better place than where we used to be because uh, we used to have just one office for the secretariat and the dean and then one general office for faculty. So now here we have an office and a secretariat, we have an office for the dean and then we have three offices for faculty. So obviously, it's better than what it used to be, yes. Uh, in, th in the future, we hope we hope to have our own school, like school of pharmacy, not, not just a block, a whole school with offices with administrative um, places for workers with them um, with their labs um, practice laboratories and all that yes this right here is the main you has campus and over here this block is the temporary block for the school of pharmacy which was constructed under the leadership of professor john chipon our current vice chancellor okay so this is the uh, our newly established um, pharmacy practice lab um, where students get opportunity for hands-on training. So we have drugs that they can see and assess and be able to um, explain how they can use the drugs for the various disease conditions, how to manage the patients. They have chairs and tables for conferences that they will need to bring up to consider um, medical cases and conditions that they are managing. You can do that here. Uh, we have also just started again using our get one allocation to begin to construct the permanent offices for uh, our School of Allied Health Sciences just behind the CD Auditorium. So slowly, the academic facilities are coming up and then the um, residential facilities for students are also coming up. Um, there were two other projects uh, which were ongoing when I uh, came over to UHAS in 2016. These are the School of Public Health building at Podome and the laboratory complex here at home. The School of Public Health building uh, had had some challenges and uh, the contractor at a point in time it became very obvious that he could not perform so we had to terminate the contract. The work has progressed uh, significantly, it's about 75% complete now. Uh, it's not been completed uh, because certificates that have been raised by the contractor have not been honored by Get Fund because of cash flow challenges. So we are very hopeful that the School of Public Health permanent site will also become ready pretty soon so that it will become available for use. Uh, and then the growth of the School of Public Health, which has now been christened the Professor Fred Newton Binker School of Public Health, will begin to grow in leaps and bounds. The lab complex is also in a similar situation um, because of uh, cash flow challenges uh, with uh, Get Fund. It also has progressed very slowly. It's also about 70 to 75 percent complete now. We are very hopeful that by the end of this year, uh, it should be available for use. If it became available, then the university could expand its programs, especially in the School of uh, Allied Health Sciences, uh, because all the laboratories for the med lab programs, for dietetics, for speech, uh, and uh, uh, physiotherapy, they all have their laboratories in there. And uh, you know, these are hands-on programs. So in order to increase intake, you must have uh, opportunities for them to uh, have hands-on uh, training. Even for our sports and exercise medicine uh, programs, we've allocated some spaces for them to be able to do their they are practical works, so our orthotics programs should have uh, space in there to be able to, to get work done. So these are the programs, the, the facilities that we had to work on uh, in order to increase our intake. Unfortunately, we've not been able to complete them yet. But there are other projects which we started from scratch, which we've been able to complete. Um, these are mainly projects that we use uh, uh, internally generated resources to uh, facilitate. 
Uh, the first among the lots is uh, the consulting rooms that we had to build on the Trafalgar campus. This is very, very important. As a teaching hospital, we need our students to be in the consulting rooms to observe the consultation processes and learn from those experiences. Unfortunately, who teaching hospital was not built originally as a teaching hospital so the consulting rooms were not set up in that manner so we had to invest a little bit of our resources to build some consulting rooms for teaching and these are now available and are in use build some classrooms for the medical school, for, uh, for lectures and for tutorials and also another block of uh, offices and a conference room for our faculty in the medical school. Before then many of them were operating from their, their car boots. So yes, it might seem like a drop in the ocean, but it, it uh, facilitated effective work for our faculty and students, particularly in the medical school. Another project which we are very happy with is our attempt to provide decent accommodation for our students. Uh, one of the things that uh, was and is still of major concern is availability of decent students' accommodation uh, on our campus. Um, so we decided to invest uh, some of our mega resources into building uh, a decent uh, hall of residence. We decided in having a hall of residence so that our students would have the opportunity to experience the JCR system, that is the Junior Common Room system, and uh, to be able to have a feel of what it is like to live on a university campus. I keep telling my friends that uh, I'm a very proud member of Republic Hall of KNUST. Indeed, I was a JCR president of Republic Hall uh, for almost two years. You know, so when our students don't have that experience, uh, they miss something in the university uh, training system. So we've been able to put up a 680-bed uh, hall of residence, which we have christened the Asogli Hall. This is in recognition for the, the good relationship we've had with the people of Asogli State. Uh, currently, uh, most of it is occupied by medical students, but we have uh, people from all other programs uh, within that enclave. Uh, it took us about four years to raise the money to be able to do that. My name is Ahyanki Steven Yakuti. I'm the level 200 medicine course rep, and I'm a resident of Asobi Hostel. The hostel has been very helpful to us. You realize that over here in Hu, it's very difficult to get accommodation and all that. So this um, Asogli Hall coming in has been very helpful. The hostel has Wi-Fi. It's extremely good. I mean, compared to other hostels, this, the Wi-Fi here is extremely good because realize that there you can't really get the connection that you need very well and all that. They've introduced these office chairs at the TV area where you can just sit and relax after a long day and or you can even have your group work and then your projects where you just sit there and then enjoy the Wi-Fi and then just go ahead with your business. Me, for example, me being a medical student, we are usually stressed as expected. So after class, I can just go over there and then just relax myself. If I have any project work to do, I just go ahead and then do it. So after doing that, we thought that if we had to build another one, it would mean waiting for another uh, four years 
put money together to build it. So we went to council and council agreed that we could take a facility from uh, GCB to put up another hall. And uh, that one we've put on the main campus, which has just been commissioned by His Excellency the President. And that has also been christened the Sokode Hall uh, uh, to say thank you to the chiefs and people of Sokode to, for giving us the 702 acres of land for the development of the permanent sites of this university. That is also about a 700 bed facility. Uh, so at least we have two of these and it is the hope that once we've uh, manage to recoup some of the money from uh, the uh, facility that we've taken through the student rentals that they pay, we should be able to begin to grow in leaps and bounds by building a few more of such facilities uh, on our campuses. So um, we are growing, uh, but it could be faster. In the development of our infrastructure, we've had to balance various needs. Our senior faculty need accommodation. And uh, we have gone through various processes, including working through uh, procurement processes with the Get Fund to put up as many bungalows as possible. Uh, there are uh, about six bungalows on the Trafalgar campus which were there before I came into office. There were two more that were completed after I came into office all on the Trafalgar campus. But here on the main campus in Sokode, we've uh, developed uh, a few more of such three bedroom facilities. We now have five of them which are already in use. There are another uh, six which are also at various stages of completion. We are putting up uh, four bedroom facilities for the registrar and other senior uh, administrators. So they are all being done at the same time. When you have many balls to juggle, you make sure that none of it falls down. So you have student needs and you have staff needs. So we try and balance um, uh, all, all, all the requirements of our, of our constituents. long after being in office, the UHAS Busy School was established. Behind me is the UHAS Basic School. We'll be going inside and you see some of the facilities they have. Many of our staff uh, wanted to have a basic school like almost all the other public universities in good standing have. You have the university primary or now the university basic schools in KNUST, in Legon and in UCC. I believe the others have something similar. Uh, so we also decided that we will embark upon such a project and I'm very happy to note that we've 
been able to put up a very first class uh, basic school which is in very high demand in the city of Go. Almost every middle class person wants to bring their child to the U.S. basic school. It is my prayer that we we'll maintain the infrastructure and uh, uh, above all give the students, uh, our, our children, the, uh, a very interesting experience as far as basic school training is concerned. Uh, I think the school is doing very well and we are very happy that uh, we decided to invest in that. But a major boost for us has been the China Phase 2 project, which is uh, a donation or a grant from the government of uh, China uh, to the government of Ghana, which was made available to us here at UHAS through a lot of negotiations and backroom discussions, which I don't want to get into the details now, but if the end of the story is that we have a, a 60 million dollar facility which is coming up very nicely and it is putting up the offices for our school of nursing and midwifery which is our biggest school as far as numbers are concerned uh, this is a three years project it's uh, donated by the Chinese government we are, we are, we are building uh, central administrative building that's offices for the VCs and higher, high, higher management that's mainly offices and conference rooms and uh, the other building is a uh, nursery and uh, uh, and uh, made way free school school building it uh, consists of three buildings one is a uh, uh, teaching block like uh, where we are staying the other one is skills lab and also offices for the school management, the deans and the other lecturers. This is yeah. for the uh, nursery and midwifery school. Yeah, it's here. We are staying in this area. This is the office building for the school. This is the teaching area. This is the skills lab. Yeah, this is a safe from the courtyard the view from the inside the courtyard this photo is a this picture is about the uh, central administrative that means in future the VC and other directors their office will be here and uh, other conference rooms uh, that one is in construction but for the for this area we have done most of the work yeah 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 this is a uh, 200 seaters classroom. Uh, this side will be the, the stage for the teacher. They have the projector and uh, uh, his laptop and a speaker. So he will speak to the students. This, this office can provide the seats for 200, over 200 students. We have four big classrooms like this in this building. Uh, and uh, uh, that side we have seen that, that is uh, 50 seaters and uh, that side we also have 100 seaters. In summary, in summary we can provide uh, seats for 2,400 in total. If we see the back, we can see they are working on the central administrative block. Because the rock is too hard, so we, we are breaking the rock over one year now and it, it already reaches the end. So the foundation work has started and uh, within six, six months, I think we are going to see the, the structure rises up. Yeah. So it has the dean's office, offices for the faculty, conference rooms, uh, library, and everything that a typical school should have. But in addition to that, we have a teaching block. The teaching block can seat about 2,400 students at a go. 
2,400 students can be seated at a go. There are four lecture theaters that seat 200 students each. And there are many other lecture theaters that seat 100 students each. And there are only two lecture theaters that seat 50 students. So this is a game changer as far as our uh, teaching infrastructure is concerned. Then there is a skills lab, a state-of-the-art skills lab, which uh, presents the opportunity for simulation of all kinds of conditions for training all our health professionals. So it is not just for the nurses, but for the medical students, for our, our students in the School of Allied Health Sciences, our nursing students, all our health students are going to have a state-of-the-art simulation laboratory uh, where they can study and uh, have practical opportunities to see what different uh, presentations some patients can come with. So for instance, you can have a simulation of a patient with pneumonia and uh, so you go to the mannequins and there will be a simulation where you can listen to the, the chest and hear all the sounds that you can listen to the heart of a patient to tell you all kinds of heart diseases that could present and it is a state of the art so we are making considerable progress and then finally we have the the central administration of the university so we're going to have the offices of the vice chancellor and his administrative setup all our directorates would have their offices there the offices of the registrar directorate of academic affairs human resources the audit the uh, finance directorate works and fiscal development our legal counsel everybody is catered for in that building so for me that is the game changer for you as another major thing uh, has been, in my opinion, the whole issue of the development of our, our governance uh, architecture. The university, when was set up, um, was mentored by the University of Ghana. As a result, Council of the University, through a collaborative arrangement, decided to adopt the documentation of University of Ghana for our governance. But we've had to now develop our own uh, instruments for governance. So beyond the Act of Parliament, which establishes the university, now we have developed the university statutes so now we have uh, the statutes and the act put together as a compendium as the fundamental laws of UHAS for everybody to see but beyond the fundamental laws we also have several policies that have been developed so we've gone through the process of engaging the university community uh, through our committee systems to develop policies for almost everything that you need to have in place as far as university governance is concerned. So we have an ethics policy, we have a research policy, we have a transport policy, we have a, a policy on financial management arrangements, we have policies from our audit directorate which gives us uh, guidance on how to be in good standing as far as all our audit processes are concerned. We have, uh, of course, the, the rules and regulations for our students, which is the, um, the student's handbook for everybody, every student to know uh, what the boundaries are 
and what to do and what not to do under various circumstances. We have a sexual harassment policy. So we have, we have policies that govern everything as far as the university is concerned. And for me, this is what universities are about. Everybody must know what it takes. And uh, it shouldn't be in one person's head. It should be in a written document that has been agreed upon through the processes and approved by the University Council. So these policies for me are very critical in the governance of the university. So we are trying to put in place systems, building systems. Beyond the policies, we've also developed various guidelines on many other uh, things that the university would have to do. So if somebody wants to go on leave, there are processes and guidelines that you go through. These are all documented in a particular way. Uh, anybody who uh, is eligible for promotion, there are guidelines for promotion. And uh, everybody knows what it is that you have to do to uh, apply for promotion so that it is not in one person's head. Uh, so this is how systems are developed. And I think over the last six years, we've managed to uh, document these things uh, to the best of our ability. Of course, there is still a lot of room for improvement. So many of these things, if at any point in time, there is a need for us to review them. There are processes which have also been documented uh, for us to be able to review what it is that uh, we already have in place. Through the China Phase 2 project, uh, government also gave us about 6 million CDs to develop other basic infrastructure to bring the whole campus up to speed in many ways. One of which was investment in a municipal water supply system. So we have invested in a municipal water supply system which has uh, laid pipes all over the campus uh, together with overhead storage uh, in many places waiting to connect to the main whole water supply system. Expansion of uh, electricity supply to the various parts of the campus has also taken place all as part of the counterpart funding from government to ensure that when the 60 million dollar project is ready uh, we will not be uh, found wanting as far as basic infrastructure and supplies as far as water and electricity are concerned. Our road network has been our Achilles heel. It's been a major challenge. Um, way back in 2014 or thereabouts, uh, a contract was awarded for the internal roads uh, to be done. Um, unfortunately, there were challenges in the delivery of the project. So of the 17 kilometers of internal roads that were supposed to be done, uh, I believe less than five kilometers was done, even that was not completed. So government has reawarded the contract as part of the uh, Sokodeho bypass. So there is now a dual carriage road being done from Sokode through to Mirage. And then our internal roads has been captured as part of that. It's making progress the 24 month stipulated period, the roads will be done. That will really transform the face of the university because it gives the university a completely different look. When the roads are done and uh, properly asphalted as you find on any decent university campus. As a university, we've had to 
expand on the mandate that we have been given. The University of Health and Allied Sciences is one of two universities in the country whose programs were predetermined by Parliament. So Parliament has already determined the schools that we can have uh, within the university. As of 2016, when uh, we took over the leadership of this university, the School of Nursing and Midwifery was functional, the School of Public Health was functional, the School of Allied Health Sciences was also functional. We have brought on stream the School of Pharmacy, which is about to graduate its first batch of PharmD uh, uh, pharmacists, that is the Doctor of Pharmacy students are about to graduate this year. It's a six-year training program. Our School of Sports and Exercise Medicine has also come on stream. It's in its second year of operation. Our School of Dentistry has also come on stream. It's in its first year of operation. We're supposed to have three institutes. We've brought two on stream. Our Institute of Health Research is functioning very well. Uh, we've had opportunity to attract quite a number of good grants to keep research in the university at a very high pedestal, as a result of which our uh, university is being ranked very high, uh, both in this country and globally. Our Institute of Traditional and Alternate Medicine is also up on stream. Uh, we've had a few teething problems, but we are uh, putting ourselves in the right pole position to ensure that uh, we pick up the pieces and run with it. So that institute is also up and uh, running. These are all academic facilities that the university is supposed to have and uh, I believe once we put them on stream it gives us the opportunity to fine-tune their operations, uh, build the necessary infrastructure and ensure that we deliver on the mandates that Parliament has given us. Um, in addition to that we've had to establish other units to make our academic life uh, worth the while. So our Quality Assurance Directorate has come up and is beginning to ensure that we do things uh, in the right way indeed. The Ghana Tertiary Education Commission has commended the university for being up to date as far as accreditation of all its programs are concerned. And the fact that our dossier, when it goes to the, the GTEC board for accreditation, uh, comes through very easily with very few uh, challenges. It tells you that our quality assurance unit is working uh, very well. We've also established our legal unit, which is helping to guide the university uh, in its legal affairs. So we have a legal counsel, an in-house legal counsel with a team that represents the university uh, in all legal matters. And also, first of all, to preempt any uh, issues uh, from occurring by making sure that uh, documentation processes are done within the ambit of the law. So our legal unit is also working very well. I'm also very happy to note that the university's finances are in good standing. We have the processes 
and procedures documented. So our financial guidelines and procedures are there for everybody to follow. We've had all our books audited by auditors who have been appointed by the Auditor General. So as we speak now, the audited financial reports of the university are up to date. Indeed, our 2021 financial reports have been audited and uh, we are uh, awaiting the final uh, report. And as part of good corporate governance practice, all our audited financial reports are available on our website. So if you go to our website now, you will find out that from the inception of the university, which is 2012, up to the year 2020, all the year's financial audited accounts have been published on their website. As soon as the 2021 uh, report is also uh, finalized and cleared by council, it would also be posted on our website. Uh, for us, it is very important that we show transparency in the use of the little resources that we've been given the privilege to manage. All these things translate into good products. The infrastructure, the systems, and everything that we have in this university is because we want to turn out the best of graduates. So, our students' experience for us is very, very important. Uh, in our 10th year, as we celebrate, it is clear that you have trained over 5,000 health professionals who are working in this country. And for us, that is our major contribution to this country. Over 5,000 health professionals trained by this university, which is only 10 years old, is a very significant contribution. And they are in all parts of the country and they are doing exceptionally well. As a result, we've also started graduate programs because some of them want to uh, continue uh, with their academic studies. So now we have graduate programs in public health, in basic and uh, biomedical sciences, uh, in the allied health sciences, We've just gotten approval to uh, start our graduate programs in nursing and in pharmacy. The dossier have been prepared and we are getting ready to hit the ground running. Our medical school is almost ready now to start our graduate entry program so that those who have studied other health sciences and want to have the opportunity to study medicine can come in as graduate uh, entry students and have a four-year training program to become medical doctors. So the university is really growing and uh, I'm very sure that with the good Lord on our side, in another 10 years, this great giant will still be rising and soaring very high.